Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, um, uh, I'll just go to the start. Together with the rise uh, of the Urnfeld cultures in, in Bronze Age Europe, we can see a dominance of, of cremation as the burial, as the primary or, or well, the general uh, type of, of burial ritual in, in large areas of Europe and in Poland. Uh, we have the Luzatian culture, the traditionally the, the thing that is traditionally called the Luzatian culture, which is part of this Urnfeld phenomenon. Um, in Lower Silesia, which is uh, the southwestern part of Poland, there are numerous sites related to this culture, well, its settlements and cemeteries. So we can see a dense, uh, dense network of sites. Uh, and towards the end of the Bronze Age, well, technically it's the early Iron Age, it's the Hallstatt C and D periods, which are dated like this. Uh, there is growing diversity. We can observe growing diversity in the in the in the burial ritual in, in Silesia, which is perhaps connected to contacts with the East Hallstatt uh, province. Uh, the number of grave goods in these graves uh, becomes larger. Uh, also, uh, new types of graves uh, appear. So the archaeological record uh, in terms of, of burial practices becomes more diverse here. And uh, uh, together with Agata here, we, we explored one of these cemeteries uh, about 30 kilometers south of Wrocław in the, in the Silesian plain. Uh, it was a rescue excavation. So there were numerous graves there. And we selected one of these graves for more detailed analysis, geoarchaeological analysis. Um, well, the, the soil background in this area, these are eroded Louvre soils. Um, they are formed in, in lowest or lowest type sediments uh, mixed with sand. Um, this is the grave during exploration. So we can see a more or less rectangular, rounded rectangular pit. Uh, numerous grave goods within the grave. And uh, for these more detailed analysis, we selected uh, the urn and the accompanying vessel. They were well preserved, that's why we selected this vessel. The urn was, uh, was our, my, our primary goal for, for this analysis. And uh, what we were trying to do is we were trying to get some answers, some detailed answers about some details about the, uh, about the Luzatian funerary ritual. This is how we believe the ritual looked like. So, the body was placed on a funeral pyre, uh, which was ignited, then the burning process occurred, and then, well, this is the question, what happened later? Were the bones picked out of the pyre? Were they, how were they picked from the pyre, and how were they placed into this, uh, into this ceramic vessel? And again, uh, we wanted to see what's inside one of these accompanying vessels. Are there any signs of, I don't know, organic residue inside in the soil? So these, are, these were our two primary research questions here. And uh, this is the method that we used. So we started with a CT scan of both the urn and the accompanying vessel, followed by exploration, layer by layer, uh, connected with sampling during the exploration. Uh, and then, well, there's a whole suite of analysis that you can do after this. Uh, but right now, I would like to concentrate just on the micromorphology here. Uh, well, this list, you can expand this list of analysis, uh, of course. So the CT scans, uh, this is the urn on the top, this is the accompanying vessel here on the bottom. So uh, in the urn, you can see a clearly bone deposit in the bottom and the soil which covered the bone deposit. The accompanying vessel, well, this is more homogeneous, but uh, on some of the scans, we can see that there's a different density in the lower part of this, of this vessel. Uh, a higher density, I'm very sorry. So, the sampling procedure, which we admit is not perfect, so we're still looking for the perfect sampling procedures for, for, such, uh, for such archaeological contexts, for, for vessels like this. We inserted an aluminum profile into the urn and into the accompanying vessel, but, well, it's not perfect, as I said, and we lost about half a centimeter of the lowermost uh, part of these uh, of these infills, which is regrettable because, well, we lost some information there probably. So we inserted the profile, extracted it, and then went on with the impregnation and uh, thin section preparation. Okay, so now to, to the results. Uh, this is a scan of the of the thin section from the from the urn. So clearly you can see the bone deposit here uh, and the soil which covered it. Uh, the bone deposit, it's composed of 
variously burnt bone, because you can see the different color, uh, mixed with soil fragments and some organics there. Uh, but what is perhaps most striking is that there are only single charcoal fragments within this within this bone deposit, and I mean really single, like three or four, which have been observed, and, and very few microcharcoal also. Uh, the soil fragments are a mixture of probably the old A and B horizons, uh, and all this is very well bioturbated. The whole the whole bone deposit right there. Uh, the bones they show different, uh, well, the temperatures of burning were, were differently and affected the bones differently, so that's why the bones have, have different coloring. And when observed in blue light, you can see that the fluorescence of these various burned bone fragments is also different, so that's, that's also an interesting thing, I think. Uh, same here, and some of the phytoliths which have also been observed in the bone deposits seem to have been burned also, but it's, it's, it's a mixture of burnt and unburnt phytoliths. Um, you can see also uh, some plant tissue fragments. There were fresh roots also penetrating into this deposit, so uh, it's not necessarily uh, ancient fragments of plant tissues right there. Uh, the accompanying vessel fill, uh, when, when we look at the scan of the pin section, we can see that the bottom part here, these lowermost two or three centimeters, is slightly different than the upper part. And uh, what we can observe in this lowermost part is uh, uh, there seems to be more B horizon type soil fragments here. Uh, it's all very granular. You can see that it's composed of soil fragments. Very well bioturbated by faunal activity. You can see many channels right there. A lot of roots penetrating into the lowermost part. When, when explored, this, this vessel, it was like covered in a mat of roots. So it was very well uh, penetrated by roots. Uh, so yeah, this is the, this is the B type soil observed here, but there are no signs of plate translocation, so what we think is that these are just fragments which fell into these into this vessel. Um, some coatings in these B-type uh, horizon soil fragments, which testify to some visual history perhaps, and single fragments of charcoal in the lowermost part and uppermost part, but also just single fragments of charcoal, single fragments of bone, also burnt bone, uh, we can see fresh roots penetrating into this part, and also some burnt phytoliths, but also unburned phytoliths, which probably occurred in the soil and just fell into into the vessel together with the soil fragments. Um, yeah, right there. So what we can say right now, these are very preliminary results, but what we can say, or trying to narrow down these these details of, of the Luzatian uh, culture burial ritual, is that. Uh, there seem to be no remains of the funeral pyre in the, in the urn mixed with the bones, which suggests that the bones were separated from the remains of the funeral pyre somehow, perhaps by flotation. But, uh, well, we welcome any ideas here that you might have in this regard. Uh, the fact that the bones have, have different color testifies to the fact that they have been variously affected by temperature, which probably uh, indicates that the burning episode on the funeral pyre, there were the oxygen was 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 somehow limited in in some parts of this funeral pyre. Well, when you look at the human body, some bones are better, kind of like uh, enclosed in flesh. So perhaps that's it. Uh, some of the bones, which has this has been suggested to us during during some micromorphological workshops, that some bones might show indication of of crushing, but in situ crushing, which might indicate that uh, the bones were somehow stuffed into this container, into this ceramic vessel. Um, and regarding the, the accompanying vessel, well, we don't see any sign of, of any grave goods there, of any, any kind of deposit which might have been considered a grave good, any type of organic deposit there. So, well, the vessel might have been just empty or, or the goods were just not preserved. But this also might be related to our uh, not perfect sampling procedure, which uh, didn't allow us to observe the lowermost part of these, of these, of both these vessels. So, um, still some work to be done there. Um, well, this method that we suggest that perhaps could be used for studying of such vessels, the integration of, of micromorphology, geochemistry, and uh, and botanical analysis. It all starting with CT scans, of course. 
Well, if we look at how the Zakian cultures symmetry look like, you can see that sometimes you can identify different zones. And these zones also seem to have some chronological differentiation. So if we sample such breaks from different zones, we might be able to track some changes in the burial ritual here uh, on a very micro microscopic scale also. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs>